All right, you ready, buddy? No. That's plastic. Wait, did we just do this? <laughs> no. It feels like it, doesn't it? Okay. What the hell? It's, welcome to the Whiskey Vault. This is a gift from ba Magnificent Bastard, Peter Golden. We just did this. No, we didn't. We did. No, we totally didn't. <laughs> Peter Golden. You Magnificent Bastard. <laughs> what? What's... <laughs> All right, so what's the deal? Um, so this is McCormick blended what, scotch. What did he send? Like, what was the? It's right there. Sc Scorby's. No, no, no. Oh, wait, oh. Okay, score. So, score. is this another very? This is another blend, budget blended three year old. Very weird blended. Yeah. So McCormick is a company in Weston, Missouri. You may know them for they because they're famous for their other work in the other all every other liquor category like McCormick vodka or McCormick tequila or McCormick. Um, Canadian, old style whiskey, American whiskey, right. rum, right. McCormick, Platte Valley corn. Have you seen Platte Valley corn in the jug? Don't they make spices? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. You seen the jug on the shelf? It says Platte Valley corn whiskey. We have a bottle over there somewhere. It's it's really like stands out on a corn whiskey shelf. Anyway, they source things and make and and blend them and release bottom shelf spirits most mostly. So. Like be be honest, be fair. If you were to just nose this and not know what was in here, what category would you say? Canadian. Yes. Yeah. There's none of that malt funk in this I'm one. I'm saying that it, it 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 smells like a budget Canadian on the nose. Yeah, with with a Werther's original dropped inside of it. Yeah. Because it's more butterscotch than vanilla. Obviously, very young. It's got to be forty percent ABV. Yeah, forty percent. Three, three years? Three years old. Wow, that's older than I was expecting. Well, but it's again, it's in scotch. scotch. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. They ha need a lot longer. Has to be actually. called, well, ha can't be called whiskey unless it's three years old. And uh, do you think this would be doing like the used barrels, what they call first fill, which is actually first fill in Scotland. It's yes. usually like a used bourbon barrel or something. Absolutely, of course. Right. I like this one better than the Scoresby. Well, that was a low. Taste it. That was a low bar. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Golden. I'm doing these because anybody can get their hands on this. Is it that popular? That well, no, no, it's just that accessible. All the ones we're, these budget ones we're doing, there anybody can get their hands on this. Okay. So very super thin and sweet. Yeah. Like, so I mean, honestly, <laughs> like, uh, like Canadian whiskey is notoriously very friendly. The vanilla and the caramel and the soft. This is like fully fifty percent less flavor than you know, entry level right. budget Canadian whiskeys that we yeah. are very commonly found in the States. Yes, and sweeter, mm. Mm. slightly sweeter. Can I tell you what this reminds me of? Mm. So I've never told the story before, but I was, uh, I think 11, and I didn't live in the nicest part of town. There's no body to this. No. There's no. I didn't live. There's no. I, I lived in the where like gang fights happened and shit. Okay. And people were like knifed in alleys and. Yeah. And How many knife fights have you been in? Two. Me too. Yeah. Ah. But not I mean, with each other though. No, no, that was all pre-high school. No, I, I was the mine were in high school. Oh, junior high. Yeah, it was high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the cops are called at one. <laughs> uh, Just saying. Um, How many fight fights have you been in? If you count those, yes, four. Oh. If you count the one where I headbutted a guy un unconscious in the parking lot, five. But it wasn't really a fight. Right. He was too drunk. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'm 11 years old. There's a bottle sitting next to the dumpster. Thank you for not asking. Yeah. Because I would have sounded like a very violent person. Yeah. 147. No. Go ahead. Okay. There's a bottle next to the dumpster next to the basketball court. Yeah. It's got stuff in it. Yeah. It's plastic. It says scotch on the bottle. Okay. I'm 11 years old. Yeah. My buddies... Or like, ooh, I dare you to drink it. Right. We open it. It's definitely alcohol. It's not like they filled it with something else, right? right. And um, I smelled it right. and refused to try it. And my buddy took the two dollars that we all had right. and drank a swig of it, and right. then promptly spit it out and threw up because <laughs> he just reacted like his his reflex right. kicked in or something. Right. The, 
<laughs> the smell of this reminds me of that moment in my life of a back alley alcohol. My first experience with alcohol. Right. Right. My first experience with hard liquor where it's like, oh, that's what hard liquor smells like. So. Because it used to be beer cans or, or beer that I smelled. Like, like, do you have context for the size of McCormick in the market of shelf space, availability, all that stuff? Because is it something where, you know, it's, it's plastic bottles and it's proof down. It's kind of like a niche product, and there's like a one no, or not two, niche. one or two towns. It's not niche. Mm-mm. Okay, I've never heard. I've never heard of it. Nine dollars. This bottle is nine dollars. Oh yeah, it's, I mean, it's a mixer. This is not. This is the type of bottle where it's obvious this is not intended for a neat pour. This is supposed to be something that fills in the alcohol need for some type of cheap cocktail. This is uh, if you go to a Sixth Street bar. Yeah. And shout, give me a scotch on the rocks. All right. Then they, then this is they pour you this yeah. on ice. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, I wish there's like some type of mechanism for or way for us to uh, treat a bottle the way that it was intended to be consumed. Yeah. Because right just, now this is a, it's, it's predominantly a neat pour channel. And it's not meant for this. This it bottle is, is not, not meant for it this. It is not meant for this. Hang on a second. I'm yeah. gonna. You go ahead and read the comment and answer it. I have to write. Preston Blanton. Of the Blanton's whiskey dynasty, that's not true at all. Do y'all think it's immoral to teach a 14 year old about whiskey, not give him whiskey, but just show him the process of how it's made and the history behind it? And the reason I ask is because my 14 year old nephew really doesn't have any interest in, or hobbies. The one thing he does show interest in is this, um, is this, is 100% because of me and my interest in it, um, in whiskey is what I mean. I, I figure I can teach him about it and that could be a legit career for him one day. What do you all think? So like you and I both have kids. This is an excellent question. Thank you for asking mm-hmm. the question. You and I both have kids. Yes. And I am very much of the mind of the position that any type of substance that uh, an adult could, you know, take and get carried away with and it becomes like a, you know, a dependency issue. Especially the legal ones. <laughs> <laughs> The blue meth is the best. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, You you don't want to make that a taboo thing because especially at that young of an age, it becomes that much more titillating. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, my parents, they just get a lot of sorts whenever, you know, there's like cigarettes or there's whiskey or there's there's like cocktails or something. And I look like coming from a very, very conservative family in Oklahoma. My dad didn't even get into beer until he was well into his 30s. Mm. Right. And then it was like, oh, wait, what's the big deal? And now I think the, you know, as a whole, a large portion of the country is experience, experiencing the realization of what marijuana actually is mm-hmm. compared to what we were told it was right. whenever we were children. It's a gateway and you're going to ruin your life and you're going to die and you're going to commit these violent crimes. And there's all of this propaganda that goes back to like the early 1900s for political reasons. Right. But bringing it back to the specific question. What I'm doing is never getting drunk or sloppy or, or irresponsible around my kids. Mm-hmm. Also, not m- ever making it taboo, and making sure that whenever there's like a story of somebody doing something ridiculous because they were drunk or they were high, I let them know. It's like, yeah, they made some stupid decisions, and this is, you know, and it's a big deal. You can't be irresponsible with this yeah, stuff. Absolutely, you can't get carried away with it. You can ruin your life. But those are people that are making bad decisions because they don't know how to bring these types of sub beer, wine, alcohol into the world without being immature and irresponsible about it. And my position is that if you make it taboo, they're that much more likely to have that immature relationship. Better for a parent to usher them into that world than to say, don't ever touch it. It doesn't exist. It'll ruin your life. And then they're left to fend for themselves as they, as they get out into the broader world by themselves. Yeah, I do the... Uh my boys are the youngest, actually, he's 10, right. uh, is most interested in the process and the science of what we're doing. Yeah. And so we talk about that at length all the time. Right. He didn't drink. Yeah. But, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's it. Uh, hey. There was a really fascinating comment that someone uh, put on the internet. We should probably read that. The one that you scribbled? No, that's totally, I just cut and pasted that from YouTube. Uh, I think Lefroig. Lore. Lore is a unique outlier, said a, br- a, a brilliant, brilliant commenter. Yeah. I think we should compare Lore to, to Lefroy 10 to show how they still live inside the Lefroy family, even though they are definitely very different. Freaking Emma. 
I don't know what it, what's happening, but I approve. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to drink that blended scotch anymore. <laughs> All right, so here's the 10. And I don't know, brilliant commenter, what you are talking about because a uh, Lafroig is still definitely a Lafroy. Are we just going to wrap up episodes with <laughs> some commenter made us do this A and B comparison of yeah. whiskeys we really like? Yeah. It is and scribbled suspiciously in somebody's handwriting that works here. Yeah, <laughs> suspiciously while right in front of you on camera while you were talking. Uh, Drunken Fury says, man, I used to watch you guys every day before the pandemic. I'm not sure what happened to the YouTube algorithm. Just stopped popping up on my page. Hope you guys are doing well. We're doing, we're doing super good, man. So doing all good. I can't find them all. Yeah, a lot of people just have their they have their like world turned upside down from the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, there's been some like big meaningful changes, but I think there's plenty of other people that have had to deal with a lot more than us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we, as as much as we are affected, which was not small, yeah. uh, we're definitely on the luckier end of the spectrum, I think. Absolutely. What did you pour I in? can't find the lore. So, Lafroy, it's definitely, it tastes like Lafroy, right? How would you compare this Lafroy 10 to your memory of Lafroy 10? Gosh, you know what? It's kind of tastes like the Freud tin. I know. <sighs> Did not see that coming. Just putting it out there. Yeah. A little palate cleanser from the bullshit. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the fine stealing a drink. If you fight me, a fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your liver, sorry. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Da -da -ba -da. The bottle lord. Da -ba -da -da. The bottle lord. Ba -da -da. Just get to the thing. Just get to the. You're just too much. Just get, just get to the thing. Jason <laughs> Carter. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 90% dancing. Yeah. Just all dancing. Yeah. Just, are you, are we realizing an unmet need of Daniel? I Wayne? just want to, but father, <laughs> I just want to die.